I'm ready. I'm ready to, you know, tell all sides of the story. Yeah, man. Let's go. You ready for this? Hey, hold up. It's the Prince. Hey, man, let's get it, man. I'm about to be a, um, a ghetto girl. <laughs> okay. Dude. Oh it covers his eyes. What does the phrase family channel bring to mind? Yeah. You gotta talk to the family. Children plastered all over videos with millions of views, drama, controversy, and of course a willingness to capitalize off of any special family moment for that hashtag social media clout. Can you guys see it? This is pregnant. Hey, sorry. It's alright, sorry, it's alright. But what happens when you're willing to push all boundaries, cross any line for internet fame and fortune? We came from the bottom, now we're here, you know what I'm saying? How the hell are they gonna judge us when we came from the We came from the bottom. This is the story of Damien and Bianca, the parents of the Prince family, and how they manipulated millions and exploited their own family for their own personal gain. Now we are. Hi friends and internet acquaintances, welcome or welcome back to another video on my channel covering the weird world of influencers and influencer scams. I'm trying something a little bit different with this setup, so let me know in the comments if you like this setup more, if I should mix this with the green screen, just kind of experimenting and having fun. If you like videos like these and want to see more of them, then don't forget to subscribe if you want to, and if you you like this video then give it a like also if you want to. Today's video is part two of a two-part series that I'm doing covering Damien and Bianca Prince and their time on YouTube. In the first part of this series I went into Damien and Bianca before they became the Prince family channel. Today we are talking about the Prince family channel. It's the Prince a channel that Damien and Bianca made at the time that YouTube started really promoting family vlogs. They realized they could do better financially through rebranding and becoming more family friendly and involving their children more and more on their YouTube channels. So the Prince family was born off of greed and a need to change content paths. Alongside the changes to the YouTube platform and increasing focus on family friendly content. But controversy only followed the Prince family once they started their new channel. How the hell did they judge us when we came from the, we came from, the bottom. from allegations of colorism? So apparently we were saying some colorist things. I guess we were colors now. To fights with other YouTube couples. Now you admit to texting karma, yes? Yes, I was texting karma. I really, I really apologize to my wife. I'm, I mean, I'm sorry for texting her. Um, and I just, I'm sorry. I apologize. To exploiting their children and more fake pranks. Prank have officially started. Make sure y'all slide in my DMs and let me know prank ideas that I can do on him. Oh. We're covering all of that in today's video. But before we get into this long-awaited Prince family video, this video is sponsored by Atlas VPN. Atlas VPN has the best VPN deal on the market. Developed by top cybersecurity specialists and IT engineers in 2020, Atlas VPN was created to make internet accessible and secure for everyone. My husband will tell you sometimes I'm just really awful with technology. And in January, my email was put into some sort of spam system and and I was receiving like hundreds of spam emails a day. It was really overwhelming and super stressful because I didn't know if my email was getting hacked or what was going on. And since I was working with Atlas VPN at the time, I installed Atlas VPN and immediately, once I installed it, I stopped getting all these spam emails. And that's because Atlas VPN blocks all the malicious links, ads, and trackers and notifies you when someone is trying to steal your data. 
which for me, since my job is primarily online, is just a huge deal to me. I have to keep my business and my online activities protected. With Atlas VPN, you can also protect unlimited devices, get the best deals when shopping online, and enjoy lightning fast speeds. Save 80% on Atlas VPN right now at just $139 a month by clicking the link in the description. Thank you so much to Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video, and thank you so much to anyone who supports the channel and clicks the link in my description. And now, let's talk about the Prince family. Now, Damien and Bianca were known on their DMB Nation channel for their ridiculous fake pranks. So I'm sure you guys are all wondering, did these pranks continue on the Prince family channel? At first, their new channel, The Prince Family, didn't display any of the red flags that were found on the DMB Nation channel, particularly the really strange actually explicit prank videos that they would upload. Most of the content that the Prince family would upload was just documenting their life, kind of vlog style, in a child or kid friendly way. But these videos weren't doing the same kind of numbers that their DMB Nation prank videos were doing. So in 2018, they decided to start adding more pranks into the Prince family channel. And in early 2018, Damien and Bianca began to completely stop posting on their DMB Nation channel and fully focus on the Prince family channel. Then on March 19th, 2018, in a video titled Kids Destroy Daddy's New Jordans Prank, Damien and Bianca slowly began to reintroduce the aspect of pranks to their new channel. Their initial pranks were still fairly family friendly and sort of the standard pranking that you see on family channels. You gonna do this on my dick? No, you did it! No, you did it! Oh, yeah. <laughs> At that time, most of their videos, which were primarily vlogs, averaged anywhere between 300,000 to 700,000 views. Meanwhile, the minimal prank content that they would upload would consistently reach a million views every time. So the couple would upload prank videos basically whenever they would need more views on their channel. But listen though, it was a prank. And soon after, the couple reintroduced the sexual theme of their prank videos. I think realizing that the shock value of these videos would garner the most views. On June 2nd, 2018, the couple uploaded a video titled Catfishing My Wife's Sister to See If She Cheats Leads to Real Breakup, which also featured a sexually provocative thumbnail and reached over 4 million views. I want you to die in this ocean, baby. They also uploaded a video titled Caught FaceTiming My Ex Prank on Husband, uploaded on January 6, 2019, also paired with a sexually provocative thumbnail. Damien, hey, come back in the house, it's a prank. <laughs> come back in the house, it's a prank. Come back in the house. <laughs> and it seems like the Prince family became trapped. Yeah, trapped with the Prince. Family! They could either produce family-friendly content that would have better ad revenue but get less views, or they could upload sexually suggestive prank videos that would get more views but were more likely to get demonetized by YouTube's more stricter ad algorithm now. They uploaded another prank video titled Caught Cheating in Bed with Carmen from Carmen and Corey Prank on January 13th, 2019. <laughs> which featured the couple from the Carmen and Corey YouTube channel. Then 10 days later after that prank video, they uploaded another prank video titled Caught in the Shower Prank with Carmen from Carmen and Corey, which featured the couple's channels Carmen and Corey and Nate and Michaela. <laughs> Oh, 
Damien and Bianca basically fell back into their old routine of continually producing sexually explicit and inappropriate prank content. <laughs> But the worst part about this is compared to their DMB Nation channel, which was solely a prank style channel, they're now posting this on a channel that's branded as a family channel. And branded family channels are more likely to get even more children viewers as YouTube promotes these channels to children, assuming that it's child-friendly content. So you're even more likely to introduce children to inappropriate topics that they haven't been exposed to yet, mixed in with family-friendly vlogs. It's just a really weird thing to do and kind of shows they didn't really care about making a family-friendly branded content They only cared about AdSense and maintaining a family-friendly image for YouTube The couple continued more and more with these types of prank videos uploading this on their family channel Pranks like catfishing my wife to see if she cheats leads to real breakup Catfishing my best friend using my girl's Instagram to see if he's loyal caught in the shower prank with twin sisters, which featured Bianca's sister Alexis and Damien's father Damon. Bianca, along with her sister, got in the shower with bikinis with a shirtless Damon to make Damien jealous, I guess. <laughs> So then Damien confronted his father and they got into a fight. First off, let's just talk about how this kind of promotes violence and violent content to kids as well as weirdly sexual content. And then of course the internet ends up exposing how you can literally see bright as day the camera tripod on top of the bathroom counter in the reflection of the shower glass. <laughs> So these people always act like the camera is invisible. There's an invisible tripod, they can't see anything. The last seemingly explicit prank that Damien and Bianca uploaded was on December 9th of 2019 in a video titled Smelling Like Fish Prank to see my husband's reaction. Smelling like fish prank. This is the fish I'm gonna be using today and it stinks so freaking bad. There was also the infamous I broke up with Damien prank uploaded on October 14th, 2019 with a thumbnail of Damien placing Bianca in a chokehold. Like if you have a child audience, you are teaching your child audience that this is okay, that this is what a couple does, especially a married couple, especially a family because you're in a family channel. Please don't. Why? Did you really just touch my skin? Followed by, I followed my husband disguised as a robber. Prank. Oh, wait, why are they in the trunk? But the creativeness of their pranks, if there was any, just continued to decrease more and more as we entered 2020. And today, the Prince family prank videos have hit an all-time low. And nowadays, their prank-related videos are pretty much just arguments between them recorded on camera. Okay, so if you're gonna be looking at Instagram and I was like, that you can have this and I'll buy. 
Like, has a couple ever argued in front of you and you felt so awkward and uncomfortable, you wish you weren't there or never witnessed this? That's basically what a Damien and Bianca present day prank is. Just a lot of uncomfortableness for everyone. This is evident in their calling my wife the B word prank to see her reaction. Never again. It's a difference between calling and acting like you act like a bro again. Or calling my wife insecure prank to see her reaction. Never again. And for the year 2021, the prank content on the Prince Family channel is pretty much non-existent, I assume because of YouTube's harsher rules. Although the majority of the problematic prank videos conducted from 2018 to 2020 are still uploaded and available to watch on the Prince Family channel, there were two specific prank videos that were uploaded and later either deleted or privatized by the couple. The first video would be the time Damien pretended to call CPS on on their family to have their daughter taken for adoption. The video was titled Giving Nova Up for Adoption Prank and accumulated over 11 million views. What I do? It was a prank. You don't play like that. What? I, it was a prank. I do everything, everything in my power to make sure these kids are just drink. You cannot play like that. You can't. Your children might not know that something's a prank. They might not be able to discern that if they're really young. And this video, if it's posted, is documented for all time. So as Nova gets older, she'll be able to look back on this and see this when her parents pranked her by saying they're going to give her up for adoption. And the second video that ended up getting deleted on the channel would be the time Bianca pretended to be killed by a mysterious intruder Shooter. It seems that Damien and Bianca have zero boundaries when it comes to what's right and what's not right to post on the internet. And as they involve their family and their children more and more, I can only imagine how this must affect their family and their own relationship. The one narrative that Damien and Bianca routinely mentioned in their videos was the couple's many failed attempts at naturally conceiving a third child. This all started on June 6th of 2017 when the Prince family uploaded a vlog titled She's Pregnant. Spoiler alert, she was not pregnant. This was followed up by multiple videos where they would hint at a pregnancy, but the pregnancy was never confirmed or denied, basically dragging out clickbaiting a pregnancy as long as you possibly can. She's been pregnant for damn near two years. That bitch been pregnant just as long as Bonnie Swanson's been pregnant. It wasn't until May 12th of 2018 in a video titled, We're Having Another Baby, that the couple would address the topic of having another child. They later revealed that Bianca was undergoing IVF or in vitro fertilization. So what we decided to do is... We decided to do this process called IVF. Okay, and what IVF is, is called in vitro fertilization. Which is a complex series of procedures used to help with fertility or prevent genetic problems and assist with the conception of a child. The couple, after already having two sons, desperately wanted a daughter and understood that IVF was the most effective strategy for ensuring a girl. So we want a girl, but the thing about it is we don't want to keep trying and then end up getting pregnant and then having another boy and stuff with three boys. Like, no, like that can't happen. On August 31st of 2018, in a video titled Son Surprises Mommy with Pregnancy Announcement Speech Bianca took her first pregnancy test post-operation and found out she was pregnant with likely a girl. Okay, DJ, it's been a couple minutes. Yeah, go get the pregnancy test off the counter. Okay, go get them. One, two, two, three, three. Open the test. And Bianca and Damien proceeded to share the news with their family and friends. Ooh. <laughs> 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 
Fast forward nine months later, or around nine months later, to May 22nd, 2019, in a video titled, The Official Prince Family Labor and Delivery. So right now, we are about to be headed to the hospital to check in to have baby girl, you feel me? It is time, man. Bianca, at the end of her pregnancy, went into labor and delivered their baby, who they named Nova Grace Prince. The birth of Nova Grace Prince, uploaded on May 24th, 2019, documented the entire birth of their daughter. And even captured what occurred afterwards. Usually, when a family vlog channel posts a birth vlog, it's hard to criticize it, besides, of course, the invasion of privacy, but usually it's such a joyous, happy moment that there's not really anything you can criticize. But this was not the case for the Prince family. For Damien and Bianca, and more particularly Bianca, the comments made after the birth of their daughter sparked controversy all over the internet. People were outraged, and for good reason. Reason. After giving birth, Bianca was handed her new daughter, and to her surprise, her daughter began to slowly open her eyes. I see your eyes, she stated, followed by, she's gonna have brown eyes for sure, in a slightly disgruntled tone. I after some back and forth with Damien, the nurse explained that darker eyed babies usually stay dark. Oh. Thanks for her color don't come in for a couple weeks. But I know she's the darker eyed babies usually stay dark. Yeah. Because yeah. I have blue eyes when I was born. Sorry. I thought you would have pretty eyes, Bianca stated in a somewhat disappointing tone. I thought you would have pretty eyes. Right, blue eyes. She got pretty eyes. eyes. After that, Damien's given the opportunity to hold his newborn child and almost immediately notes that she's definitely going to get darker. You can see it around her fingernails. Bianca then pointed out the melanin around the baby's ear, to which Damien stated, oh, her ear's dark. Oh, look at them. They look so cute, you guys. Well, definitely yeah, you can see her nails. Her yep. Nails. Look at her ear. Yeah. You see it? Her ear's dark. <laughs> I, I, think, I think she might be like DJ. Then only moments later, the discussion about their daughter's eye color is mentioned again. She's gonna have brown eyes for sure, Bianca explained to her mother and grandmother with a displeased look on her face. She's gonna have brown eyes for sure. That's okay. Yeah, a little bit. Oh, I feel about that. About her eyes being brown. Yeah, okay. And then the nurse intervened and stated that she'll be a brown eyed girl. Yes. She'll be a brown eyed girl as she attempted to make light of the situation because the parents seemed more concerned with the appearance of their daughter rather than her health and well-being. And this only led to further discussion about the daughter's skin complexion. Yeah. No, she's gonna be dark in the DJ. The nurse interrupted the conversation again and had to remind the couple, but she's beautiful. <laughs> in a clearly distressed tone. The conversation of their daughter's eye color and skin tone would be a topic throughout the video. As Bianca seemed more and more displeased with the look of her daughter. And this entire subject really pains me to talk about because A, their daughter is beautiful and their daughter should never be in a world where she has to compare compare her looks to others, especially from her own parents who are constantly comparing her looks and making her feel less than. But also, the thing that pains me the most about this is as their daughter gets older, because there was so much backlash surrounding this whole situation, their daughter will probably see information on this later and she'll know how her parents responded when she was first born and what social media as a whole thought about it. So I want to reiterate that I'm sure that Bianca and Dana mean love their daughter. There's no doubt in my mind that they do love their daughter. It's just that social media saw a lot of red flags in this situation that depicted a colorist mindset. And a lot of Damien and Bianca's followers felt really, really hurt by this, having experienced something so similar in their own lives. But she had the baby, and the first thing she does is judge the baby by a skin pigment. Now kudos to Aaliyah for stepping in, and Aaliyah Jane, the makeup artist, says, Bitches are so ungrateful and need to grow up and love themselves. There are so many women in the world who can't even carry slash have children. I don't even have kids yet. But even now, all I pray for is to have a healthy baby and pregnancy. Nothing else matters besides that. 
thank you, Aaliyah. That was the best and most amazing response ever. Because Damien and Bianca don't just have a child audience, but they have an audience of a lot of black children. So it must have been so hurtful for these children to watch their idols speak this way and judge their own daughter for her skin color. And it must have been so frustrating for other social media figures, especially those in the black community, to see this as they're trying to spread a positive and greater message and create a better future for children of color. So across the internet, Bianca was deemed a colorist for these remarks, which is the differential treatment based on skin color and especially favoritism towards those with a lighter skin tone and mistreatment or exclusion of those with a darker skin tone, typically among those of the same racial group or ethnicity. Bianca responded to these allegations with a series of tweets. This is the reason I didn't want to show my baby, followed by, y'all people are disgusting. My baby is beautiful beautiful and not once did I throw shade at my daughter for her skin or eye color. I've always said I wanted a chocolate baby. Little do y'all know. Someone replied, it sounded like you didn't want the baby. To which Bianca replied, I paid thousands of dollars for her. How could I not want her? Now, of course, I don't know what goes on behind the scenes. There are tons of things that we haven't seen and I don't think it's right to speculate on such a personal and important emotion like wanting your own child, especially right after giving birth your hormones are just so up and down and fluctuating, you're not going to be in the right mindset. So it's not fair to say that she didn't want the baby, but I also see how people could be concerned and how a lot of these statements need to be properly addressed and honestly should just be taken off of the internet because it sets such a dangerous precedence and such a bad example that children are getting from your videos. So overall, I can see why a lot of people were concerned. Though the majority of outrage was targeted towards Towards Bianca, Damien was not exempt from criticism. Footage resurfaced from back in March of 2017, during the time that the couple had their DMB Nation channel hacking incident that I mentioned in part one. Damien, who at the time held the camera, shouted, I honestly don't feel comfortable saying what he shouted, so I'm just gonna show it in a clip. Show your face, You're all this shit. Out of here, bro. Yeah, he shouted that to the anonymous hacker. It wasn't until the hospital incident that footage of this interaction started to resurface. And people were really upset with all of this for several reasons. People with darker skin tones already deal with more prejudice within society. It's not only an issue prevalent throughout history, but an issue still prevalent in today's society, especially with women, that can impact women more than men. Bianca's daughter should not have to grow up in a household where she's not only judged by society, but judged by her own mother based on her physical appearance, or where she feels like she has to compete with her lighter-toned, green-eyed mother. It's a toxic mindset to instill in your own children, and also a dangerous mindset to instill in your audience of millions who are primarily made up of children and people of color. On June 5th of 2019, roughly two weeks after the couple were involved in the controversy, the Prince family uploaded a video titled, Nova Has Colorist Parents. And this video was supposed to address the colorist allegations of their birth vlog. Basically, what we about to talk about is a video we did with the birth vlog, the birth of Nova Grace. Mm -hmm. It's on the channel. Um, it's not coming down to the people's eyes. Hey, you wanna take the video down? Like, no, no, what? It's gonna stay up, it's the birth of our baby girl, you know what I'm saying? The couple proceeded to reference a song they produced earlier that year and stated, how can they judge us when we came from the bottom? We came from the bottom, now we're here, you know what I'm saying? How the hell they gonna judge us when we came from the, we came from the bottom? You know what I'm saying? We ain't never had enough. We was living on like, bro. Facts. And that's a true story. Like, what? Like, you know, like, that's all. Let me tell us our story. Y'all get the message. Like, how, like, how y'all from judges? You know what I'm saying? Essentially using their past and how they came from poverty as an excuse as to what again why they aren't colorist like you see how this isn't actually addressing the issue here they do end up apologizing to the video but only to their fans and supporters because people took what they said the wrong way so apparently we 
you were saying some colorist things. I guess we're colors now. I guess we're colors. But first and foremost, I want to give, we want to give an apology to all our fans, all, supporters. all the real DMV supporters, all the real Christian supporters. Uh, we want to give y'all an apology because it's a lot of, um, like, you know, disheartening stuff that's going, that's being said about us. That's absolutely not true. You know? Not true whatsoever. So we want to apologize to you guys for even having to deal with this. You know what I'm saying? You guys deserve, you know, the apology. Bianca then tried to justify the comments she made when she said she wished her daughter had pretty eyes by saying, Now, when I said, I wish you had pretty eyes, I didn't literally mean she doesn't have pretty eyes. When I said pretty eyes, I meant the term of green eyes. People are going around saying that I don't want my daughter because I said she doesn't have pretty eyes. Um, in the video, I was looking at her and I said, I was talking to the nurse and the nurse was like, if they're dark right now, they're always going to stay dark. And I made a statement, yeah, because when I was born, my eyes were blue and now my eyes are green. And then I looked at her and I said, oh, I wish you had pretty eyes. Now, when I said, I wish you had pretty eyes, I didn't literally mean she doesn't have pretty eyes. You know what I'm saying? I didn't mean, oh my gosh, my daughter has ugly eyes. When I say pretty eyes, I meant the term of green eyes. Isn't that a fucking self-report? I mean, that kind of shows where your head is at in terms of what color equates beautiful and not beautiful. She then proceeded to ask Damien whether or not anyone has ever called his eyes pretty, to which he replied no. Because Damien, have you ever got a compliment about your eyes? No. My sisters have never got compliments about their eyes. My mom always told me that everywhere we went, everybody's like, oh my gosh, your daughter has such pretty eyes. Brown eyes? Don't get complimented like green eyes or hazel eyes or blue eyes. An animation appears in the bottom right hand corner besides a minus one, mimicking a dislike button right above an animation of brown eyes. I didn't mean it to be no harm. Um, I didn't mean it for it to be offensive towards anybody. I just meant I wish you would have my eyes. And I still to this day feel like at least one of my kids should have my eyes. It's just a preference. Like, I'm sorry. There are literally songs about beautiful brown eyed women. I always thought growing up that my mom had the most beautiful brown eyes. Beauty is really in the eye of the beholder. So you thinking that says more about your outlook on what is and isn't beautiful as opposed to what just blatantly is and isn't beautiful. They finished off the video explaining how the whole thing was just a complete misunderstanding and that all they did was try and examine their daughter to see who she would most likely resemble. I mean, I think every parent does it like, oh, who does she look like? Does she look like you? Does she have my eyes? Does she have your nose? Does she have our mouth? Like, that's just what you do as a parent because as a parent, of course you want your child to look like you. Why wouldn't you? Which of course every parent has done. I feel like my baby sometimes looks so much like my husband, sometimes looks more like me. You've probably had your looks compared to your family members by your parents. If you're a parent, you've probably compared your children's looks, but it becomes dangerous when you associate positive or negative connotations to their looks. Like you can say, oh, you have your dad's nose or your mom's forehead or whatever. But when you say you have brown eyes, I wish you had pretty eyes. That's when it's not just comparing looks anymore, but becomes about whether or not you see your daughter having good or bad looks, which is just so damaging. I'm sure there are some people watching this who've experienced this by their parents, and if that's you currently watching, I'm so, so sorry you experienced this. Then, to try and move on or maybe gain sympathy from the situation, on June 9th of 2019, the Prince family uploaded a now-deleted video titled, They Destroyed My Lamborghini, where they showed some footage of Damien's car after it was vandalized by some supposed vigilante with the word colorist in yellow spray paint. In my opinion, Damien and Bianca and the name The Prince Family was trending for being associated with colorism and a lot of people were tuning in to videos about this topic. So Damien and Bianca decided to capitalize off of this by making a video that had the words colorism in it, basically making a video about the scandal while also having it be a situation where something of value of theirs was vandalized to garner sympathy. So they're basically able to profit off of the entire controversy and 
also gain more sympathy towards themselves, especially from their core fan base. But unfortunately, things would only get worse for Damien and Bianca through the decisions and actions that they made, of course, because on September 9th, 2019, the Prince family uploaded a video titled, Picked Up My Husband in an Uber Disguise, where Bianca disguised herself, not really, like wow, impressive disguise, and basically anonymously picked up Damien for an Uber ride. All right guys, so I'm back again with another prank video. So as you guys can already tell by the title, today, 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 I am about to be doing the Uber disguise prank. I am about to be getting my makeup done, changing my entire wardrobe, getting my hair done, and I'm about to be looking like a literally different person. A video concept that Damien did five days earlier to her on September 1st. So of course, you know, it's definitely not a fake prank. It's definitely not staged. Also, these disguises are just so well done. Gotta love with the Damien Uber prank video, the fake voice filter that was applied after the video was filmed. Um, to my house? Your house? Yeah, don't you have the address? Yeah, I was just, I got the address, I was making sure what we're doing. Okay, my house. Super believable, super well done. Now the controversy surrounding these videos wasn't because they were obviously very fake and very staged, but it was Bianca's disguise, as you can probably guess, that landed her in even more controversy. All right, y'all. Bianca had her entire body tanned to darken her complexion. She then had someone apply dark makeup to her entire face. <laughs> okay. Dude. Oh my it covers. I'm happy, thank God. Oh my goodness. You ever used that brand before? Yeah, I always use Morphe. Um, oh. Surprise, bro. <gasps> <laughs> what the heck? Oh, I already look different pretty much emulating blackface. To make the situation worse, she decided to call herself BB Shakita. I need to find a name. My name is, um, you know. <laughs> BB, I can be BB. And incorporated various very toxic stereotypes, saying that she was going to be a ghetto woman. I'm about to be a, um, a ghetto girl. I gotta, I gotta learn how to talk. How can I talk? It's your girl, you know what I'm saying? Bianca tried to explain this by saying the whole thing is just for entertainment purposes only. All right guys, also this video is just for entertainment purposes only. I'm not here to bash anybody or make it seem like I'm trying to be a certain type of way. Entertainment purposes only, okay? Like as if that excludes you from all criticism. So Bianca, completely changing her skin tone and wearing a wig, picked up Damien disguised as his Uber ride. The rest of the video was Bianca trying to annoy Damien while also hyperbolizing or exaggerating common black stereotypes. I'm driving my car. Out of all the videos uploaded on DMB Nation and the Prince Family channel, this video was easily by far the most offensive. At one point, Damien looked at Bianca in the video and said, You are the ugliest Uber driver I've ever seen in my life. Bro, you are the most ugliest Uber driver I've ever seen in my life, bro. That is very rude. You're the most ugliest Uber driver Can I go? I'll open your eyeballs. And given Damien's prior remarks concerning black women, this did not sit well with people either. Damien responded to the criticism via Instagram, people don't like us, but yet they continue to watch our videos. That don't make any sense. The community is so dry that people literally is forced to create drama of some kind. Realize it or not, drama brings more attention, more views, which equals more money. Y'all are doing us a favor. I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. At Bianca, where do you want to go on vacation next? I mean, he said it right there. And aside from this one statement, the couple continued to disregard everything and move on past the situation. Now things are about to get messy. It's about, uh 
Demi, Demi and Bianca. Transparency. Yeah, I lost my respect for Bianca, especially. You sit there next to your cheating ass man, sitting there defending that what he did was right. Damien and Bianca have collaborated with a lot, a lot of other content creators throughout their time on YouTube. We got a special guest in the building. Tell us how you feeling. Hi. And today we're gonna be doing a special prank on the homies. We're gonna be pranking Damien and Corey. Carmen and Corey Pritchett, more known as Carmen and Corey, were one of the more notable couples that the two collaborated with. Carmen and Corey were first featured on the Prince Family channel on January 13th, 2019, in a video titled Caught Cheating in Bed with Carmen from Carmen and Corey Prank. Oh. The video followed the same format as all of their other previous pranks. This video almost instantly blew up and garnered millions of views over the span of just a few days. The audience loved the four together and requested more content. Carmen and Corey then proceeded to upload, taking Bianca from the Prince family on a date prank. Yeah, I'm about to prank David today, so I already got Carmen to get Bianca in on this, so she agreed, so I'm happy. You about to take her on a date. Then the group of four turned into a group of six with the addition of the couple's channel, Nate and Michaela. The three couples then collaborated together in a video titled Caught Cheating in Bed Prank with Carmen and Bianca from the Prince family. This was followed by Caught in the Shower Prank with Carmen from Carmen and Corey. all so original. All the couples are wearing the exact same outfits in both of these prank collab videos, so they clearly filmed it all on the exact same day and didn't even bother changing outfits. The three couples continue this trend over the following months, cross-promoting each other, collaborating on pranks that definitely weren't exhaustive and boring and overdone. <laughs> accumulating millions of views and cross-promoting, sharing their fan bases. I can't imagine how sort of confusing and weird this must be if you have an actual in real life relationship and then are constantly doing pranks about how that relationship is on the brink of falling apart with cheating and arguments and fights, lusting after other couples and just weird stuff like that. Like I feel like that would be so stressful for a relationship. How can you have a happy relationship and constantly be doing these types of pranks? And I think that this really shows with the Carmen and Corey situation and the aftermath of what ends up happening. On September 30th of 2019, Carmen and Corey uploaded a video titled Exposing the Truth About the Prince Family. And the situation started after the couple no longer collaborated with the Prince Family and they all unfollowed each other on social media. Got a lot to do with Carmen, you know what I'm saying? Got a lot to do with me. It's about uh, Damien, Damien and Bianca, Prince family. You know what I'm saying? Uh, everybody see that. We fell out. Yeah, when it always started, I think when they, people started noticing it when um, we don't follow each other. Yeah, we all followed each other. Corey then started to talk about a reality show that was being produced by the Prince family. It all started uh, with the Prince family reality show. Listen, guys, we about to gather a whole bunch of YouTubers together. We about to trap. We about to trap them. Yeah, they about to be trapped with us. They about to be trapped with the Prince family. Yay! Footage was leaked from this reality show showing Corey seated beside a fairly attractive woman, while Carmen looked visibly upset a few rows behind him. This was paired with footage from later that night, which showed Carmen being comforted by both Damien and Bianca. What happened was, we was in the bus, headed here, and the girl next to him was touching him. I'm not having that. Like, he's supposed to let that girl know. 
Corey explained that he and Carmen initially wanted to be in the show but decided to pull out due to a conflict in their schedule. Nevertheless, Damien and Bianca continued to pressure them more and more until they felt like they were obligated to do the show. Me and Carmen really didn't want to be a part of the show. We had our own stuff going on at the moment. And, uh, what, and it was just like a lot, a lot of us some going on. We really didn't want to be a part of the show. But for some reason, they really wanted us to be a part of the show. But Damien and Bianca desperately wanted them to be on the show and did everything to make sure Carmen and Corey said yes. Then, unfortunately, on the day that they were scheduled to begin filming, Corey got news that his cousin had passed away, which already put him in a somber mood before filming even began. Corey decided to stay and continue with the show out of respect for everyone involved with the production. Actually, on the way there, I found out my cousin died. I found out my cousin had just died, and you know, it hit me hard, man, because it was unexpected. I was hurt, I was sad. And I, but I was trying to be strong for them. I was trying to, like, keep it cool so that boy, I can hear they still right for them. According to Corey, Damien, Bianca, and the reality show producers were the only ones that knew what was going to be happening during the reality show. All of the contestants were left completely clueless. The reality show was filmed at a mansion, and when all the contestants arrived, they were ordered to go into separate rooms and get dressed for the first event. Then, all of the contestants were supposed to get into a bus where they'd be taken to a club, which was supposedly the first event at the this reality show. They were all told to enter the bus, however, all the contestants in a relationship could not sit beside their partner. When everybody had to get on the bus, the challenge was nobody can sit next to their partner. So me and Bianca was mismatching everybody around and stuff like that. So nobody, nobody sat next to their partner. Nope, and, I, and it actually caused a little bit of drama, but it wasn't intentional. Alright, so you sure you good, bro? Like you gonna say it, I can just the problem is Carmen and Corey have a history of infidelity on Corey's side, so he was instantly irritated by the situation. He told me to go to the bus first. I was like, all right, cool, you go to the bus first. And then they put this girl on the bus next to me. If y'all know me and call me, me and call me, we've been through a lot. And you know, we get working on a lot of sales and we fell our relationship and all that. So when he put the girl in the suit with me, I was like, nah, we're not doing it. Then once they were seated on the bus, the woman beside Corey started to flirt with him. Corey immediately saw all the cameras pointed in his direction, and he realized he'd been purposely set up to cause drama for the show. Because Damien and Bianca were fairly close with Carmen and Corey and have at least worked with them on numerous occasions, they were familiar with the dynamic of Carmen and Corey's relationship, as well as probably their past trauma. And it's kind of gross and weird that they basically utilize this past trauma to cause drama, trauma, drama, on their reality show. Y'all know what y'all doing. I don't like this. Y'all know what y'all doing. I'm not liking what they doing on this show because like they know what they doing because they know that me and Carmen easily get into it and come down to another girl with them. So it all pulled back down to that they knew what they was doing. They knew that they, 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 they made a drama. They knew that they wanted to use Corey and Carmen to put drama on their show. I mean, it's one thing if the whole thing's planned, but if you're basically using things that you know will trigger quote unquote friends of yours so that you can get more views and more shock value and drama on your own show for your own benefit, that's kind of shitty. Putting your friends through actual emotional trauma for your own benefit, kind of shitty. When the bus arrived at the nightclub, all the contestants entered the nightclub except for Corey. He texted his manager about the situation saying he no longer felt comfortable and desperately wanted to leave. Corey requested an Uber and then called his mother to tell her about the situation. During this private phone call with his mother, Corey became emotional and then noticed that all the cameras were once again on him. So basically what you're saying is you want to get eliminated the first day. I ain't true, man. You ain't true, man. I got mad. I got mad. I, I got really irritated. Like, no, nah, I said, I ain't doing this shit. I was like, no, nah, I'm gonna leave. I was like, and it's fucked up. I was, I was mad, bro. And then, like, then when we got to the club, everybody got the bus. I hopped off the bus. 
I called an Uber. And then, you know, I started crying because I got like, I, you know, I was just hurt, but I was just mad. They got the camera in my face, recording everything. As is the thing with a reality show, usually they try and get as many dramatic emotional moments as possible, but it just seems like this was a really bad day for Corey. He needed respect and privacy because he was kind of going through a lot. Corey then left the show, had an Uber drive him back to the mansion where he picked up his car and drove home. Once all the contestants finished at the club, they asked everyone to go back into the bus except for Carmen, who they asked to stay behind and talk with them. Damien and Bianca then started to check up on Carmen, who was under the influence and quickly became emotional. I was in the bus, sitting here, and the girl next to him was touching him. I'm not happy with it. Carmen could not comprehend why Corey left until Damien said, Corey kind of said something about you, but I don't know if I want to tell you because I don't know how you're going to feel. Damien told Carmen that Corey said that she was too insecure, which of course upset Carmen. So Damien said, well, uh, Corey kind of said something about you, but I don't ever want to tell you. So he was like, he said something about you too insecure. So he gave you a reason to be insecure? Yeah, plenty of reasons. So basically, okay, give me a reason. He chilled me already. While I was pregnant, I went through a lot. When I decided to build my trust, he still decided to cheat on me. Sometime later, Carmen pulled out her phone and opened Instagram where she saw a direct message from Damien who asked for her private number. The text messages show that Damien seemed supportive, but as the messages continued, he started to question Carmen's relationship with Corey. He was like, I know what you need. So when he said that, I'm reading the message and I'm like, what's that? And that's exactly what I said. Y'all gonna see the messages. And he sent me the, uh, what's the emoji card? Uh, it's just basically the Yeah, which you use that for the, you know, the emoji work. As the conversation continued, Carmen started to realize that Damien was trying to bait her into saying something incriminating about Corey and their relationship. And then he said, it could help, but not from him. So, which means I needed the, you know, but not from Corey. So that automatically tells you, oh, he wants Carmen to cheat on Corey. Damien then insinuated that Carmen should cheat on her husband and sleep with someone other than Corey, possibly hinting at himself. This just seems like a toxic working environment. Imagine having couple friends that you also do sexual pranks with and you're constantly wondering, is this a prank? Is this a setup? Are you serious? What's going on? Also low-key sexual harassment in the workplace. This just seems very stressful. Damien then asked Carmen via messages to send him photos of herself to prove that she's Carmen texting him, not Corey. See, this Corey. I said, no, this is Carmen. This is my number. And he said, prove it. Send me a picture. So what I did was I screenshot all my, my pictures in my camera roll. I just screenshot. After he repeatedly asked her for a photo, Carmen sent Damien a photo of her camera roll. Damien then zoomed in on a selfie where Carmen was posed in a somewhat sexual manner and requested that she send that specific photo to him, which she denied. He zoomed in to the one picture where, yes, I'm showing my, my leg, like on the side, I had a body suit on and some long socks, which Corey had took some pictures with. He zoomed into that picture and he told me, he said, send this picture. I'm like, no, that's not right. The situation only gets messier as Bianca gets involved and apparently says that Corey was flirting with her and accuses Carmen of flirting with Damien. And so she's using drinking as an excuse. She used drinking as an excuse. She was using drinking as an excuse and Corey was using drinking as an excuse also. But she was sober enough to tell you her business. So I did, I wrote Carmen and I said, since everyone else want to talk, what's the issue? She said, what are you talking about? I said, you know what I'm talking about, Carmen. It's just this whole weird 
web of a mess of who's flirting with who it just gets messy really quickly and in the end both couples go their separate ways thank god also just once again a toxic working environment for everyone involved this is not healthy youtubers need an hr department everything regarding carmen and corey could have been avoided if damien and bianca were really looking out for their friend's best interest their real life friends were on the brink of a possible separation but instead of telling their camera crew to give them privacy to deal with everything, they filmed it all and used it as content for their reality show. The situation with Carmen and Corey is ultimately an example of how Damien and Bianca have zero boundaries between what's appropriate to film and exploit and put on camera and on YouTube for millions to see, and what's a private situation that should be kept between the parties involved. I hide these guns. Like, Y'all making me and Carl, y'all putting us in a bad situation in front of everybody and on camera. You see what I'm saying? It's all like this ain't fun, you feel me? The trailer for the reality show was uploaded on November 30th, 2019, titled Trapped with the Prince Family. The episode that included Carmen and Corey was titled He Cheated and Now She's Pregnant, which was a reference to Corey's past infidelity as he cheated on Carmen during her pregnancy with their first child. He cheated on me already. While I was pregnant, I went through a lot. When I decided to build my trust, he still decided to cheat on me. So yes, if I'm insecure because of him, not because I want to be insecure. Which is terrible, so awful. And I can't imagine how bad that must have hurt to have that brought up again by a reality show title. Unlike their cringy, poorly thought out previous reality show that they tried to do called the DMR Experience, Trapped with the Prince family ended up being a massive success, accumulating more than 22 million views on YouTube over the span of eight episodes. So nevertheless, Trapped with the Prince family ended up being a major success. Damien and Bianca probably never really learned learning their lesson. Something the Prince family is most known for today is uploading very clickbait content. The Prince family has clickbait worse than rice gum. I'm not even kidding. No matter the situation, Damien and Bianca will find a way to over-exaggerate it or even make it into something it isn't through their title and thumbnail to get as many views as possible. The most notable of these clickbait titles and thumbnails is their We Broke Up series, basically, that they continue to do on both channels. These videos usually have the title of We Broke Up with both Damien and Bianca in the thumbnail looking sad. Damien and Bianca have used the phrases, we broke up, I broke up, or simply break up in over 15 separate videos on their Prince family channel since its launch in late 2016. The couple understand that their fan base is made up of fairly young children who look up to them and may even live vicariously through their family. I know a lot of young people that follow family vlog channels don't have the best family life at home, so they live vicariously through Damien and Bianca's family and may even get invested or have a parasocial relationship with the family. They may seek guidance, acceptance, and appreciation through Damien and Bianca, who are sure to manipulate their fans by pretending to be all those things and feel all those things. They refer to their fan base as a nation. They describe their fans as family. You gotta talk to the family manipulating these children and giving them a false sense of security that they might not be receiving in their own lives. So their audience becomes more and more invested into their channel and is willing to watch 30 minutes of clickbait, buy merchandise, and support all their endeavors. And most importantly, their audience becomes so devoted, they're willing to defend them against any harsh criticism, which is also the reason why they've managed to slide under the radar. It wasn't until they uploaded a really, really concerning video titled guess her age challenge we failed on february 4th 2021 that the broader internet really started to pay attention we about to be guessing these females age okay the thumbnail showed damien making a suggestive face towards a picture of a girl that had her face blurred out with the caption she's 12 above the photo and you have a family channel with a child audience 
why our family channel is always the worst. Other notable clickbait videos include the time they uploaded a video titled No Heartbeat on February 19th, 2019 amidst Bianca's third pregnancy with a thumbnail of Bianca being lifted on a stretcher into an ambulance. The majority of the video consisted of Bianca crying and physically in pain. <laughs> Me. It's alright. It's alright. It's alright. It's alright. They coming. They downstream. <gasps> Man, I'm here for you. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. And Damien recording the entire thing instead of, I don't know, helping. Throughout the video, Damien paced up and down the house, asking the audience to send prayers and filming the whole thing. It's gonna be okay. Oh my gosh, y'all. Really, really pray for us. I do not want. Papers. The paramedics soon arrive and surprise, surprise, Damien continues to film the entire thing. Later, we find out that Bianca had a UTI, which is extremely painful, but to clickbait that she had a miscarriage so late in her pregnancy, when that's something heartbreaking and traumatic, traumatic, that women deal with is just disgusting. You're exploiting a very, very serious thing that so many women have experienced and endured, and it's just so wrong. They literally use their idea that their unborn child died as a means of clickbait. Overall, it's just really weird how a lot of family vloggers will basically exploit their pregnancies. Like your child being born is not a business opportunity. It's like they're all so happy to gain a new employee that has to work for free on their channel. Sorry, not sorry. The Prince family has also uploaded videos claiming to get into bad car accidents when in reality, their accidents are just like minor accidents. When you, when you, when you got in a car accident, the guy just hit it from the back. Oh we ain't allowed, bro. Dang. It was a it was a big semi coming. Dang. Oh man, the Lambo. And with all these car accidents, they always have to mention that Bianca's pregnant and make it seem like they got in this huge car accident while Bianca's pregnant to basically make fans and people worry about whether or not she's okay so that they can get more clicks and views. There's also been so many instances where the couple has used their own children as clickbait to the point where their children are so accustomed to this YouTube life that they know what facial expressions to make for the best thumbnail. So let's talk about the exploitation of their children on YouTube and how Damien and Bianca have used their children to remain relevant on the platform. So the Prince family is another one of those family vlogging channels who, how can I say this, pretty much uses their kids for views and money. I don't know about you guys, but I kind of have a problem with a child constantly being shoved into a camera just for views and money. Try to get a DJ, say goodbye to the vlog. <laughs> say bye. Kyrie. Can you, can you look up at the camera? One of the early instances where they've used their children for clickbait would be in the video titled DJ Almost Drowned, uploaded on July 31st, 2017. The thumbnail was taken from a moment where Bianca held both of her sons, DJ and Kyrie, in the water. DJ, for a split second, had his head halfway under the water, and from there they had their narrative for the vlog, when in fact, no one almost drowned and it was just an uneventful day where the family went to the pool. They also also recreated this exact same video on December 14th, 2020 with their second child, Kyrie, in a video titled, Bianca Saved Kyrie From Drowning. Kyrie was in floaties this entire video. There was never a point that he almost drowned. And they just started to use their kids more and more for clickbait on their Prince family channel. Now, I just wonder what their children are gonna think looking back on these videos as they get older and reflecting on how their parents used them and exploited different situations that were central parts of
of their childhood that now millions have seen and they'll never get back. They'll truly never have a special moment that's just between them and their family. The years 2020 and 2021 have been the quietest years for the Prince family, but they continue to involve their children with their content more and more every day. Damien and Bianca even created a separate channel for their oldest son, DJ, in early 2019 named DJ's Clubhouse. DJ! Go mama! Johnny! Johnny! Your papa! Eating cookies! New papa! Telling lies! New papa! Okay DJ, I'm going back to sleep now where they had their son do challenges, receive toys, go on trips to family restaurants, and even review different candies and snacks. DJ's clubhouse quickly became a huge success and averaged anywhere from hundreds of thousands of views to millions of views depending on the topic. They eventually incorporated their other son, Kyrie, and changed the channel name to the Prince Family's Clubhouse. And with the constant support of their main channel, the Prince family's clubhouse has accumulated over 380 million views and more than 1.93 million subscribers. Their children aren't even 10 years of age and are already the face of major YouTube brands and a business that has been estimated by Social Blade to have generated upwards of 1.3 million in 2021 alone. Will they see any of this money? Will this pressure at such a young age age negatively affect them. There are currently no laws and very little safety measures to protect children of YouTube. And in my opinion, Damien and Bianca have shown themselves to be greedy and exploitative. If they've exploited each other and each other's relationship so shamelessly, who's to say that they won't do the exact same thing to their own children? And who's to say what the long-term consequences of all of this will be? the general conclusion that I have after doing this entire series on Damien and Bianca and their channels, my main concern is once again with the children. I really hope Damien and Bianca don't push it too far with exploiting and showing their children's private life on the internet. And I hope that their children are able to develop their own identities and do their own thing outside of the world of YouTube. And most importantly, I truly, truly hope that Damien and Bianca are saving this money that their children are making making for their children to have in the future. Looking at this entire story of Damien and Bianca, where they came from to where they are now, I can't help but wonder, is it worth all of this to become something, to live comfortably? Their family is fed well, even if it is through the parents shamelessly showing the family life and exploiting their own children on the YouTube platform. Damien and Bianca really did come from nothing. Essentially, Damien and Bianca have captured the American dream that we've been told for years and years, but at what cost. And if you were in that situation, broke with no job, a family starving, would you do the same as Damien and Bianca? At the end of the day, there really is no right answer to life. There are no good or bad guys. And really, we're all just trying to live under the circumstances that we've been given. And that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it to this point, and if you made it to the end and haven't subscribed yet, subscribe if you'd like to. Thank you so much to everyone who enjoyed always watching my videos and makes it to this point. It really means so much to me. I spend weeks putting together videos, literally weeks. So the fact that people enjoy my content and watch to this point really means a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!